Hello, I'm Jefferson, and I'm going to present the work entitled An Efficient Preconditioner for Mixed Finite Element Approximations. I start my presentation speaking about our motivation. Mixed finite element approximations are called the finite element approximations which we are solving more than one field simultaneously. And this kind of approximation arises in several uh, engineering applications such as in reservoir simulation. And what we want is to develop fast iterative solvers for reservoir simulations. But we also want to ensure local conservation for these approximate solutions. We want to develop low cost and efficient preconditioner for high order mixed finite element approximations, and also to extend this methodology for multi-scale analysis. So to understand what we are doing here, I need to speak some things about the mathematical framework behind the sentence here. And now we need to understand how the, these divergence free spaces are built in our code. So to understand this, I show you the diagram sequence, which is a diagram who relates the finite element spaces in terms of differential operators. And from vector calculus, we know that these two operations here are valid. So we know that applying this idea to the finite element spaces, we know that if we take the curl, for, exa for example, if we take the curl of the H1 uh, functions, it results in the kernel of the H deep spaces, which means that we have only divergence three functions here. To extend this idea to three dimensions, we need to take the curl of the H curl functions. And this is how, basically, how these functions are built in our finite element code. But to apply this idea to um, reserve our simulations, we need to take in account the compressible uh, effect. So what we do is to take these divergence free spaces and build another finite element spaces, which takes in account this compressible effect. This space is called the divergence constant space. It is a, uh, a finite element space built with an elementwise divergence constant uh, term. In this case, we take uh, the lowest order Hadiatoma uh, finite element, finite element space, which has a uh, constant normal flux per phase, as illustrated here in this figure. And we sum with the divergence free functions I presented you before, which are composed by the edge divergence free functions, like this one here and the bubbles for the divergence-free functions. And this uh, const divergence constant space is built uh, simply by the sum of these two kind of functions. So now we apply this divergence constant space to our model problem, which is the mixed Darcy flow. And it consists in finding this constant uh, normal flux and the diver this constant number of flux here and the divergence free functions, but also the constant pressure per element, uh, such that these three equations here are valid. And this problem can be written in a matrix form here, which uh, each one of these terms here can be represented in a block matrix uh, of this, this matrix form. But now what we do here is to extend even more our formulation to a semi-hybrid form. Uh, more specifically, what, what we do is to enforce weakly the continuity of the normal flux component by means of a Lagrangian multiplier field. And when we do that, the, our formulation becomes this one with two additional terms taking in account the Lagrangian multiplier, which is enforcing the 
uh, normal flux component. And finally, our matrix problem becomes this one here with the two additional terms, block matrix given by these uh, terms here. And now what we do is to work with this formulation here and apply static condensation to this formulation to both the normal constant uh, flux and the pressure variable and condense it to the, to the uh, Lagrangian multiplier and the divergence-free functions. And when we do that, our problem becomes this one here given by a block 2 per 2 matrix. And this is the real problem we are going to solve iteratively. So there are some properties I need to talk about this, uh, this final problem we are solving. One of them is that the only variables of the or only flux variables we have in this problem here are the higher order edge fluxes because the divergence free bubble fluxes are also condensed in this problem. And the other property is the, that the, this diagonal here in the matrix M mu corresponding to the coupling of the constant la pressure Lagrange multiplier is negative definite. So our iterative scheme consists on separating the, the two equations I presented you before in the matrix form problem. And then what we do is to solve the second one iteratively by means of a conjugated gradient and then substitute the solution onto the first one. Uh, more specifically, our algorithm uh, consists on decomposing the matrix M nu mu, which is independent of the polynomial degree because it is related to the uh, Lagrangian multiplier, which is constant per element phase, or where, which means it is independent of the polynomial degree. And then we solve this second problem by means of the conjugate gradient with a block diagonal of reconditioner. And once it is converged, we can recover, simply recover the, the other uh, variables of our problem by sub substitution, backward substitution. So this is our algorithm. Now I'll present you some numerical results. Well, first I'll present the problem setup. We set a tolerance of 10 to minus 10 to the iterative process. The permeability transfer is equal to the identity. The numerical tests are, were performed to, with quadrilateral and hexahedral uh, finite element elements. And the following exact solutions were adopted. Notice that we took here uh, only academic uh, problems. We are not uh, applying this to real world uh, reservoir still. So let's go to the first to the to the case which with uh, H refinement. In this case, when I say H refinement, it means that we are taking a finite element mesh and then putting more elements inside of it. When you look at the number of CG iterations, conjugated gradient iterations, what we see is that the, the number increases and then reaches a level and doesn't increase anymore with mesh refinement. So we can say here that our method is independent, the number of iterations in the conjugated gradient method is independent of the mesh refinement. The same conclusion can be uh, drawn to the condition number. So we can say that the condition number of our, our matrix in the, is independent of the mesh refinement. And finally, if we look at the problem size reduction, we can see that the condensed problem we are solving can is, it represents around 40, 30, 40% of the original problem which is a high reduction in the problem size. Now looking at the P refinement, which means that I have a constant finite element mesh discretization, and I'm changing the polynomial degree 
of the approximation. If you look at the number of iterations needed to achieve this solution, it has a sort of log uh, behavior and also the conditional number has also a log behavior. And here we, with these results here, we could validate our, our theoretical results, which means that we have a, a sort of log, square log uh, behavior to the conditional number uh, when we look at the purifiement. In the 3D case, the same results were observed for the H refinement, where when we can say that our problem uh, is independent of the mesh refinement. And for the problem size reduction, we had an even more impressive result with a reduction around 77% on the problem size. And for the, uh, the P refinement, the same, the same conclusions were drawn. So we have a log, uh, log uh, behavior in the number of iterations, and our theoretical results were again verified for the 3D case. So the conclusions of our work is that we have an efficient per conditioner obtained with low number of iterations. The number of iterations doesn't increase its mesh refinement, the number of iterations increases in a log scale with polynomial degree. The theoretical results for the matrix condition number were obtained with optimal rate. We have good results for both 2D and 3D approaches. Uh, we had a high reduction in the number of equations for the global system. Uh, an important key of our problem or method here is that we, can, we have a conservative solution at each uh, step of the iterative scheme. It means that we can stop the iterative scheme at each time and take this partial solution to solve, for instance, a transport problem and the solution is still our conservative, this is conservative. So it's a great advantage of our method. The next steps of our work is to extend this approximation spaces to any source term, not only constant per element, and apply the methodology for a multi-scale analysis and reserve our simulations. Uh, I would like to thank these companies and these institutions for the financial support and also thank the, thank the audience.